Hi and welcome back to the channel. Round 12 for 2022 F1 comes to France for the French Grand Prix. We are now halfway through the F1 season of 2022 and the year is really flying by. I did a mid-season review for this season already in my previous video. I've linked it below if you've not seen it before. This track alongside Spa and Monaco is actually a doubt for next season's calendar. No news on this track or any of those two other tracks I mentioned but I did look at if Monaco is obsolete in a previous video and again I've linked that video below if you haven't seen it. The Paul Ricard circuit was built in 1969 with X racers acting as consultants in the layout of it. Racing began at the circuit the next year after with F1 actually hitting the circuit in 1971. Jackie Stewart won the inaugural first race. The circuit distribution of low, medium and high circuit corners is the key reason why this circuit is the most favoured of the drivers and also the most used test track in the world. The circuit's return in 2018 in the F1 calendar showed to the world it's an actual overtaking gem as we tend to get good overtaking on this track every year. The race takes place over 53 laps of this 5.8 km circuit on Sunday. This is the weekend schedule. Last year's race we saw Max put it on pole with Lewis starting in P2 but off the line Max then went wide in turn 2 and let Lewis through the lead but during the first pit stops Red Bull managed to undercut Lewis and come out in front. Red Bull and Max then made his second step on lap 32. Mercedes then didn't pit any of their drivers as they tried to do the race on a one stop strategy. This meant Max had it all to do on track to try and win the race. He then managed to pass Bottas and then Lewis for the lead to win the French Grand Prix. Hamilton finished in P2 with Perez in P3. Going into this race weekend, the FIA has stated they will do tougher tests on the roll hoops for 2023. This is a direct result of Juan Yu Zhou's accident in the British Grand Prix. Zhou was of course involved in one of the F1's scariest crashes that we've seen in recent times. As his car flipped over, made contact with the gravel and then flipped onto the fence. He got caught in between the tyre barrier and the fence and was struggling to get out. After a nervous wait however, the marshals managed to extract him from that car. And incredibly, he was without any substantial injuries. This is good to see from the FIA to take swift actions about this accident and that safety is still the forefront of this sport and making sure racing is safe for all the drivers. In not so good news, Andrew Lowe, a previous employee for Aston Martin, was racially abused. He claimed he was subject to racial and homophobic behaviour by the team and their workers. He was a labourer building parts for the car that Vettel drove. The verbal abuse started when he joined a subcontractor back in February this year. Aston Martin have come out to say that he's taken this seriously and they've fired all the employees involved. It's sad to see this still going on especially after the comments by Nelson Piquet recently as well. Aston Martin and the teams generally need to do better with this as this shouldn't be really happening in this year in 2022. I personally feel we're never going to stop talking about issues like this but I guess bringing them to the Lamb Labs and reporting on them is a good way of bringing teams to obviously make sure they do something and as I mentioned not so long ago we were talking about no PK but I feel like outing the incident is a very good way to make sure teams react quickly and of course take appropriate action which Aston Martin has done. Finally Christian Horner has dismissed that Red Bull will be one of the teams that will be affected by the new FIA directive after Total Wolf stated that the Red Bull team have flexi flaws. The FIA, F1's governing body, have confirmed there'll be a new directive come the Belgium Grand Prix in August. This is a clamp down to make sure that the flexi flaws don't flex as much, but the directive actually is centred around safety and pool poising, with this new metric that the FIA tend to introduce. But of course, the FIA have also stated that these new measures are to stop people and teams flexing with the flaws following speculations that some teams are doing this and exploiting the rules. Horner of course came out to state that his team doesn't do this, while Toto stated that his team does. I guess there's only one way to find out and that's of course when we reach the Belgium Grand Prix and really see how fast that Red Bull is or isn't fast because of the flexi flaws. Join me as usual on Monday for my weekend review where I'll go through the weekend as a whole as well as give my driver ratings out of 10 for the weekend. Follow me on Twitter where I'll be live tweeting the live sessions. I've left a link for my Twitter in the description below. I've also linked a bunch of videos I've done previously in the description below as well so make sure you check them out as well. Make sure you click the subscribe button below for more F1 news, analysis and opinion. If you've liked the video click the like button below this will really help the YouTube algorithm.